Save. Now. Hey, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome to the Dice Tower. Today is May 3rd, 2018, and this is just a video that I'm going to do quickly here to talk about the Dice Tower Award nominations and what we've nominated. So we're going to be going through here. I'm going to just be going through the nominations. If you have any questions about the nominations and the award process, at the end I'll take a few questions about it, and then we'll go on. So let's get started and take a look here at the Dice Tower Award nominations for the year. 2017. Now, 2017 is a big year. When we pick games for the year, we pick games that were published in 2017. We try to pick ones that are fairly widely available in 2017 and or were published in English for the first time in 2017. Sometimes if it came out the very end of 2016, it counts because it barely made it into 2017. So there's a little bit of, you know, sometimes it, if you look at the board game geek dates for games, they're not always quite when the original game came out or maybe it was a print and play beforehand. There's all sorts of things that can change things. But we determined that these were 2017 games. So with that being said, let's talk first of all about the voting process for how we pick uh, these. Okay, so the way this works every year, I have about, uh, I'd say there's 90 people voted on these nominations. There's probably 100 or so people in the committee. These are made up of uh, all the different people in the Dice Tower. If you see them on our shows or their contributor or they work behind the scenes of the Dice Tower, they have a vote. Um, there's also prominent bloggers and reviewers and other people. Anyone who I think knows a lot about games, they come in. Um, we have a lot of people offer to join the committee and a lot of them do. Interestingly enough, just so you know, I get things going and I help run the process, but I have a lot of help from other people. Brant Sanderson did a, a big bang up job helping me get this together this year. Uh, but I don't actually vote myself unless there's a tie. And this year, there actually was not a tie. So uh, at least for the nominations thus far. I'm really happy with this, but what we do at the beginning of a year is we uh, people are saying names. I'd like to nominate this for this. I'd like to nominate this for this. And we make these big lists. And they just sit there for a long time. We finally cull those down together. We put them all into these one big list. And then everyone votes on these. They can vote for as many as they want. If you think a game should be on a nomination list, so be it. The top five in each category that get the most votes become um, the, the games that win that category, except for Game of the Year, which is the top ten. Then for the rest of May and part of June, we play these games. Hopefully most of us have played these games as time goes by, but we try to play the games that were nominated, and then we will do our final voting. When we do our final voting, you can only pick three games in each category, and you give th your first, second, and third choice. And they will each get a certain number of points, uh, depending on how many choices. If you only pick one choice, it actually gets fewer points, and that's to keep people from gaming the system because they've tried. Um, and then the one that's that get the most points, we announce those live. This will be Thursday evening at Dice Tower Con. And we won't, not only will we do it there, but we'll also be streaming it live on the internet. So, with that being said, we're going to get started to, uh, well, welcome new sponsor, Robert Geislinger. We're going to get started by going through the different categories. So this, by the way, is our logo. This is probably the last year this is going to be our logo. And also we have another surprise coming up with our... Uh, Dice Tower Awards as time goes by. But let's get started with our first category, Best New Designer. All right, so here we go. The nominees for the Best New Designer. Now, by the way, Best New Designer, what this means, this category is it's either their first or second game. You'll be like, oh, they already did one game. Yep, their first two games, they count for this category. So here are the five games that were nominated for Best New Game Designer. So first we have Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress from Cephalofair Games. Then we have Too Many Bones from Adam and Josh Carlson, published by Chip Theory Games. We then have Photosynthesis, designed by Jammer Huck, published by Blue Orange Games. Spirit Island, designed by R. Eric Roos, published by Greater Than Games. And Dragon Castle, designed by Jammer Huck, he has two games in this category. Luke Ricci, Lorenzo Silva, and published by Horrible Games and Simon Limited. So these are the five different categories for this. Um, I'm not going to take a lot of comments on the games as we go by here. I think these games, I, I am very happy with our selected categories. But I should mention here that the, the order of where these games are, the size of the box, that means nothing as random as kind of random or how they fit on the page. Uh, nothing about, right now these are all equal, the games in each one. All right, next category, best 
game artwork. Now this, you have to remember, has nothing to do with whether the game is good or not. Honestly, most of the games that get nominated here are good games, right? But this is how good is the artwork in this game. So let's take a look at the nominees here. We'll start with Near and Far, illustrated by Ryan Lockett, published by Red Raven Games. Lisboa, illustrated by Ian O'Toole, published by Eagle Griffin Games. Charterstone, illustrated by Lena Cassette, David Forrest, Gong Studios, and published by Stonemeyer Games. Century Golem Edition, illustrated by Justin Chan, Chris Quilliams, Fernanda Suarez, and published by Plan B Games. And Yamatai, illustrated by Jeremy Flory, published by Days of Wonder. This is always a category, I think, that doesn't get it as much love as it should because artists should get their due. They do some great job, and just look how beautiful all these games look here. All right, next category, the best game theming. Uh, this is a category, what we do here is we're picking not our favorite theme, but a game that has a new and unusual theme, or a game that has a theme that's not done very often, or a game that takes its theme, whether it's been done before or not, and really brings that theme to life. Here are the categories for best game theming. The nominees, I mean. This War of Mine, designed by Mike Oraz and Jacob Winescui, published by Awakened Realms. Ex Libris, designed by Adam McIver, published by Renegade Game Studios. S Photosynthesis, designed by Jean Merhak, published by Blue Orange Games. Spirit Island, designed by R. Eric Roos, published by Greater Than Games. And Near and Far, designed by Ryan Lockett, published by Red Raven Games. Five very different themes. So there you go. Best game theming. This is one of my favorite categories. Then best two-player game. We're looking for the best game for two players to sit down and play. It doesn't necessarily have to be a game that's only for two players, but if you're looking for a great two-player game, these are our five nominees. First we have Santorini, designed by Jordan, published by Roxley Games. Just to clarify, I know if you look up Santorini, it looks like it came out years before, but it came out just at the very beginning of January 2017, the new version from Roxley Games. Fog of Love, Jacob J Jaskov, published by Hush Hush Projects. Codenames Duet, designed by Vlada Shvatel and Scott Eaton, published by CGE. Caverna Cave vs. Cave, designed by Uwe Rosenberg, published by Mayfair Games. And The Fox in the Forest, designed by Josh Burgel, published by Renegade Game Studios. So great if you're looking for games for two players. Highly recommended all of these. All right, best game reprint. Now, we try to pick games It's not just like, hey, this is the second print run of a game. No, this, there's usually some sort of change. Maybe it's artwork, or maybe they brought a game back that's been out of print for a long time. There's a lot of great reprints every year. Here are the five that we pick for the nominations. First, we have Twilight Imperium 4th Edition, designed by Dane Beltrami, Corey Kaneska, and Christian Peterson, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Then we have Coliseum, designed by Wolfgang Kramer, Marcus Lupk, and published by Tasty Minstrel Games. We have Stop Thief, designed by Rob Davio, Dr. Robert Doyle, and Jessup Jacobson, published by Restoration Games. Uh, Nemo's War, designed by Chris Taylor, published by Victory Point Games. And Downforce, designed by Rob Davio, Justin Jacobson, and Wolfgang Kramer, and published by Restoration Games. So it's pretty interesting. These, some of these games were published a long time ago, and now we look at them and see just how they look in 2017. All right. Best game expansion. Great games are fantastic, but what if we can have just a little bit more? These are not based on how good the original game is, but how good this expansion adds and makes the original game better. Here are the five best game expansions from 2017, according to us. The nominees are Scythe, The Wind Gambit, designed by Kai Stark, Jamie Stegmeier, published by Stonemeyer Games. Then we have Terraforming Mars, Venus Next, Designed by Jacob Frixelius, published by Stronghold Games, Frix Games. Star Wars Rebellion, Rise of the Empire, designed by Corey Kinezka, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Zaya, Embers of a Forsaken Star, designed by Ira Fay, Cody Miller, and published by Far Off Games. And Champions of Midgard, Valhalla, designed by Ole Steinus, and published by Gray Fox Games. You like these games already? Then you definitely need to get these expansions. All right, let's take a look now at the best party game. Hey, I'm having a party or I'm having a get together. What's a great game to bring out? Well, here are five great ones that we nominated. First, we have Magic Maze, designed by Casper Lapp, published by Sit Down Games. 
Then we have Word Slam. This is designed by Inca and Marcus Brand, published by Cosmos Games. Where Words, designed by Ted Osbach, published by Bezier Games. Meeple Circus, designed by Cedric Millet, published by Matago Games. And Rhino Heroes Super Battle, designed by Scott Frisco, Steve Strump, published by Haba. So there you go. You want to have, bring some fun games to a party? These are five excellent choices. Best co-op game. I'm always very happy to have cooperative games involved in the Dice Tower Awards. I think cooperative games have really breathed a lot of life into the hobby. People like to work together. It's fun to be competitive, but it's fun to sometimes just all go together against a common enemy or goal. So here are the five nominees for best cooperative game. Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress, published by Cephalofair Games. Flip Ships from King Clanko, designed by Renegade Game Studios. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition, designed by Nikki Valens, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Pandemic Legacy Season 2, designed by Rob Davio and Matt Leacock, published by Z-Man Games. And 7th Continent, designed by Ludovic Rowdy, Bruno Salter, and published by Sirius Pulp. Whew, which one of those would you pick? All right, here we go. Best Family Game. Now, there's a lot of terminology and names you could say for this best gateway game, best casual game. I just like the, the term family game, so that's the one we're using. But games that you can bring out and play with pretty much anybody. Here are our five nominees. Azul, designed by Michael Kiesling, published by Plan B Games. Baron Park, designed by Phil Walker Harding, published by Mayfair Lookout Games. Century Spice Road, designed by Emerson Matsucci, published by Plan B Games. Downforce, designed by Rob Davio, Justin Jacobson, Wolfgang Kramer, published by Restoration Games. And Sagrada, designed by Adrian Adamscrew, Daryl Andrews, and published by Floodgate Games. So you're not sure what to buy for Christmas? Well, Christmas is a long way away. For Memorial Day, here are some games you can get for your family. All right, next category. Best strategy game. These are games that offer you a lot of strategic choices. If you know someone who's a gamer gamer, these are the games that we would recommend you get for them. So we'll start with first nominee, Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress, published by Cephalofair Games. Then we have Anachrony, designed by Richard Amon and Victor Peter and David Zerky, I mean, Tursky, I'm sorry, published by Mind Clash Games. We have Near and Far, designed by Ryan Lockett, published by Red Raven Games. We have Spirit Island, designed by R. Eric Roos, published by Greater Than Games. And finally, we have Dinosaur Island, designed by Jonathan Gilmore and Brian Lewis, and published by Pandasaurus Games. There you go, some strategic games. I'm loving looking at all these box covers. Box covers look so much better these days. Best board game production, best production values, great miniatures, great wooden pieces, just good pieces across the board. It doesn't mean that they have to have these big, beautiful miniatures. It just means that the production of the game itself looks fantastic. It's a game that's just a pleasure to see on the table. Here are our five nominees for that. Twilight Imperium 4th Edition, designed by Dane Beltrami, Corey Kineska, Christian Peterson, and published by Fantasy Flight Games. Azul, designed by Michael Kiesling, published by Plan B Games. Wasteland Express Delivery Service, designed by Jonathan Gilmore, Ben Pinchback, Matt Riddle, published by Pandasaurus Games. Charterstone, illustrated by Lena Cassette, David Forrest Gong Studios, published by Stonemeyer Games. And Photosynthesis, designed by Jammer Hawk, published by Blue Orange Games. So those are games with some great table presence. When you see any one of these games set up, you're excited and you look and go and have fun. All right, most innovative game. These are games where there's something interesting, something different, something that new that it brought to gaming or just so it took something that we've already known and uses it in a different way. Here are our nominees for most innovative game from 2017. Drop Mix. Um, this is from Hasbro Games. Designer Unknown. Fog of Love, designed by Jacob Jaskov, published by Hush Hush Projects. Charterstone, it was, um, from, sorry, by Jamie Stegmeyer from Stonemeyer Games. Seventh Continent, designed by Ludovic Rowdy, Bruno Salter, published by Sirius Pulp. And Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress, published by Cephalofair Games. All right, so there you go. Games that brought something new to the genre. All right, best small publisher. For this, we picked publishers who had five or less published games in 2017. 
Not necessarily they might have published more games since then in 2018. But in 2017, they had five or less published games. So here we go. Nominees here are Azul, designed by Michael Kiesling, published by Plan B Games. Century Spice Road, designed by Emerson Matsucci, published by Plan B Games. Sagrada, designed by Adrian Adamskew, Daryl Andrews, published by Floodgate Games. Seventh Continent, designed by Ludovic Rowdy, Bruno Salter, published by Sirius Pulp. And Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childers, published by Cephalofair Games. All right, one last category here. That's the best game of the year. Remember, this is the one that we have 10 um, games in for it. So here we go. The 10 games nominated for best game of the year. Just what are our favorite games? Azul, designed by Michael Kiesling, published by Plan B Games. Century Spice Road, designed by Emerson Matsucci, published by Plan B Games. Seventh Continent, designed by Ludovic Rowdy, Bruno Salter, published by Sirius Pulp. Gloomhaven, designed by Isaac Childress, published by Cephalofair Games. Charterstone, illustrated, um, designed by Jamie Stegmeier, published by Stonemeyer Games. Dinosaur Island, designed by Jonathan Gilmore, Brian Lewis, published by Pandasaurus Games. Sagrada, designed by Adrian Adamskew and Daryl Andrews, published by Floodgate Games. Spirit Island, designed by R. Eric Roos, published by Greater Than Games. Pandemic Legacy Season 2, designed by Rob Davio and Matt Leacock, published by Z-Man Games. And Near and Far, designed by Ryan Lockett, published by Red Raven Games. So these are the uh, 10 games that have been nominated for Best Game of 2017. Those are all the different nominations. We'll be publishing a press release at... Uh, we're having a little bit of web trouble, so we don't have our nominees up on our internet website yet, but you'll be able to find them soon enough by going to DiceTowerAwards.com. Spread the word on that. All right, let's go bigger here. Um, what I'm going to do now is just answer a few questions. So if you have any questions here or any comments, I'll answer some of them, of course. Remember, I did not vote on any of these. Um, so I can't answer for how the people vote it, but I did keep an eye on the voting to make sure it was done properly. Um, so if you have any questions... Then ask me about it, and I'll jump onto it. I'm, I, again, while I'm waiting for questions, I will say that I'm very, very pleased with the slate of nominations, and I would gladly take this and say these are great games to get. Even if I don't like some of the games on this list, and I'm not saying I do or don't, but even if I didn't, I would still say they all are fantastic games. Is there a category I may add in the future? Um, uh, Possibly, we consider different categories some years, and some years we cut a category because there's not enough games in that category. Sometimes we cut a category like we cut war games in the past just because there's too much controversy over it. We didn't feel we could do that, game, that category justice. We also, some of us didn't feel like it deserved its own category. But it depends. We might add a new category. You never know. If there's a lot of games in a certain thing, kids' games is one that we've done in the past. It depends, though. We need enough people to be able to vote on the kids' games category. Um... I feel that Plan B shouldn't qualify because it's basically Philosophia renamed. Well, it's not really, though. They sold their entire company and started from scratch. A brand new company. I, I've been to their headquarters. There's like six people sitting there. They started over again. Sure, they had resources and know-how and stuff, but I, I, it doesn't disqualify them. Um, has anyone at the Dice Tower played Lisboa? I feel like it was just nominated for one of the categories, so I'm going to have to go with yes. There are many of the people who voted played Lisboa because it was nominated for more. It was, there are people voted for it in many different categories. Uh, good or average year for gaming? I think it was a very good year for gaming. Is there a single game I thought missed out on the list? Oh, possibly. There's a couple games, you know, that every year I'm like, oh, that game might make it. Oh, it didn't make it. Oh, well. You know, but it's the way it is. Uh, I'm not speaking out of anything specifically there. Secret Six nominated in the category. No, same thing there. Um, Grim Forest. Some people have asked about Grim Forest. Grim Forest came out at the very beginning of 2018, so that would be eligible for next year. I would not be surprised if it was nominated for Best Production Values. Are there games that are surprised that make the list? Not really. You know, whenever we do these years, every year people are like, ah, oh, the same game gets nominated for a lot of categories. And there are a few games here that made a lot of categories. But what can we do if a game is that good? Should it not win multiple categories? I've, I've never understood why different games, you know, it's not fair that one game wins many categories. Besides, we don't know what games are going to win at this point in time. I have my guesses, but we'll see. 
My little side being published, or am I surprised and excited? Yes and yes. Um, I just answered that question. Uh, let's see. My favorite hat? That's not really uh, a concern here, is it? Uh, let's see, let's see. Not many other questions on this. We're going to shut this down in a bit. This will be my shortest live video ever. 20 minutes so far. This is not my favorite hat, by the way. Once again, if you missed the beginning of the video, I'd like to do a shout out to a lot of people who helped. Several guys put together the nominations. Brand Sanderson led the way there and got me this, you know, nice printout sheet. We went over it with a fine tooth comb. There's a possibility that we missed stuff. You know, sometimes we find out after the fact, wait, this game didn't necessarily meet this criteria, shouldn't have been here, and so on and so forth. And then we have to go back and fix that, that, those things. And that may happen again, but we, we try our best to get it right the first time. Um... How does complexity factor in a choice for game of the year? There's nothing that factors in the game of the year except is it your favorite game of the year? And again, I try to pick a very diverse category. I got people who love heavy Euro games. I got people who love thematic games. I got people who only like light games. I want all the people voting on these different games so I can get just the best choice. It's simply the best game of the year. If we're looking for a heavier game, strategy games is where it's going to be. If you want a lighter game, family games is where that's going to be. BJ also helped a bunch. Yes, thank you to BJ also for helping out quite a bit. Board game, board game gumbo. What happened to the top 10 dexterity game video? I don't know. It just went up at 2 o'clock, I guess. Um, is the voting done in person or remotely? No, 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 no. It's done. Um, we do it on Facebook. We have a private Facebook group where we do the voting. Well, the voting actually takes place on a separate thing. We do allow lobbying in the thing. You can talk about who you want to vote on stuff, and we, we argue and discuss things back and forth. And every year I come in and say, come on now. You know, we should vote for expansions based on the expansion, not, the, not how much you like the base game. And don't vote for components on how much you like the game, but vote for a game with really good components. Um, and there's, there's some spirited discussion on stuff like that, but I don't think anyone's, like, secretly manipulating the votes. Is there a chance solo games could become a category in the future? Yeah, sure, there's always a chance for that. And maybe it will be, we'll see. How many people voted the Dice Hour Awards? On these, specifically, I want to say it was 93 people. I might be wrong, but it was pretty close to that. Do you have any changes to your voting system to keep something like code names sweeping so many categories like a couple years back? Again, I'll keep repeating this. I don't think it's a bad thing that one game sweeps the categories. What can you do? Then if a game sweeps a bunch of categories, then wow, that must be some sort of game. But you know, if it was me and I'm looking at this, I wouldn't even really care so much about the winner of a category. I'm looking at the nomination lists in general because any one of these games, that w if it wins, that would be a worthwhile winner, I think. And it would be one that I could point people to. So if you don't like for the year code names that won, then go look at that year and look at the ones that were like second, third, fourth, or whatever. And why don't you pick one of those to play? Um, and again, I don't know on the, the uh, people always ask me like, when will this game become available again? When there are more printed? I'm never quite sure when any particular game is coming out or not because the companies, they print games and they get into distribution and there's production and all sorts of things that happen. And so you'll have to check with the company to know when the game will be back in stores. Probably not myself. And well, you know what? I think we're going to end here. We'll keep this video short and sweet. Thanks so much for watching. Tomorrow morning, we'll be playing a couple games live. Uh, Travis Chance from Colossal Games is visiting the area, and he's going to be showing us Omen. Sam vs. Z will be playing a two-player game of Omen, and then we'll be playing Western Legends. Um, so both Omen's on Kickstarter right now. Western Legends was on Kickstarter earlier this year. I'm very excited to try this one out. Omen's a reprint, a two-player reprint of a game. So you have a chance to see how both of these games play. Those will be tomorrow. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Congratulations to all the companies. If you're a company or designer or artist who's watching and you say, hey, I want to get those logos sent to me in high resolution, email me and I'll get those out to you. 
Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all later.